Big East Championship. Villanova has won in this building each of the last two years. And as loud an ovation as you'll hear for an opening tip, the fans here to the Carrier Dome will stand at the beginning of each half until the Orange make their first basket. An early foul, no basket. An early foul on a Mukhtao Yuru or Rinzi Anuaku to the line. And that's got to be a concern very early for Jay Wright because Jay Billis, Jay Wright doesn't have as much size as Syracuse has. He's got to keep his big guys out of foul trouble. Yeah, that's why he's starting Mukhtao Yaru, and they went right at him in a high-low set. You've got to put a lot of pressure on the ball because it's tough to get around these guys up front. Rick Jackson coming off a 28-point game Tuesday at Providence. Well, Syracuse has made two great post plays already, and that's something that will just kill them if it goes that way throughout the whole ball game. They dominated the smaller Friars on Tuesday night, and as talented as Villanova is, they don't have the bulk that the Orange have. Let's see if Yaru can make plays out of the middle of that zone. That's going to be a tough spot for him. An inexperienced player, Yaru, a freshman, and he missed about half the season with hepatitis as well. A turnover by each team. Reynolds finds Reggie Redding, passes it up. And a three-second violation on the Wildcats. The Hall of Famer Jim Beheim, as he told Aaron earlier, surveying a crowd of better than 30,000 for the 68th time in his coaching tenure. And uh, I mean, Coach Knight, this is not the biggest city in the world. Look at the people they put in here, no matter what the weather is like. It's truly one of the great stories in college basketball. Well, I think that no one in any sport is is followed more exclusively, more elaborately than Syracuse basketball is. Wesley Johnson knocks down a three. A very good early sign for the Orange. He suffered a hand injury a couple of weeks ago. Has not shot the ball well since, but he is getting healthier. He's shot 29% since that fall five games ago against Providence. His right hand still swells up quite a bit, but he is really fired up for this game. One of the best players in the country. Syracuse has done what it does well better than Villanova has done what it does well thus far. Look at this deep shot, about a 27-footer from Fisher. What does Villanova need to do better in their, in their next few possessions? Well, they've done a good job against the zone. They've made four shot fakes that have gotten them a little bit of territory into the zone. They just need to be a little bit careful on their selection. Yaru with the rebound off the miss from Trish. Fisher in transition. This would help Villanova if they can get down the court before the zone sets up. Plus a foul. Boy, what a terrific outlet pass by Moose Yaru. And you can see by the finish that Corey Fisher, one of the most dynamic drivers in transition, goes right to the basket. And he not only can draw contact when he goes to the rim, he can finish those plays as well. You know, Jay, he probably uses going to the bucket both hands as well as anybody could possibly do. Wesley Johnson called for the foul. Well, a violation, excuse me. So the original foul on Johnson, that was a lane violation on Johnson. So Fisher gets the free throw over and takes advantage. You know, that's one of those points that just should never happen, Dan. And when the game's all over, if it's been a one or two point game, you look back at a giveaway like that. Man to man for Villanova. You have to think that Syracuse is going to want to try to go inside again. Trish was looking for Jackson. Jackson wasn't expecting it. They've got some very good defenders. Reggie Redding, a terrific defender for Villanova. Antonio Pena, a little bit undersized, but a quality defender as well. This guy, Corey Fisher, a junior, really a spark for the Villanova team. When he plays well, they can really go to the next level. Scotty Reynolds, 19 points per game, a senior. The best numbers in every category for him in his senior season. A Pena turnover. That's where Syracuse is so alert. Robbins comes up with that steal because he's paying attention to where the ball is and where men are. They are very, very observant in this zone defense. Well, we've talked about this before. Andy Routens is known as a shooter, but it does him a disservice just to call him a shooter. Reynolds with a deep three for Villanova. He always seems to have the answer whenever Villanova needs something positive to happen. 
Jackson floats it up and for the second time tonight gets the hometown roll. Jackson was a little quicker offensively than Villanova setting up defensively was. Jay, you've done a lot of Big East games. Rick Jackson now compared to Rick Jackson a couple of years ago, just night and day. He keeps getting better and better. You know, Dan, he's got great hands. Reynolds again, and 34,000 people may intimidate some folks. Scotty Reynolds is not one of them. Well, you've got to extend and make him put the ball on the deck. Even though he is a very good driver, you'd rather have him put the ball on the floor than be able to bounce right into his shot. Make somebody else open, you know, even if you've got to help on him a little bit. But getting started, that's a great point, Jay. You've got to get him started toward the, toward the uh, bucket rather than allow him to sit there with a shot. Jackson follows up his own miss. Lefty puts it up again. Villanova ball with a chance to take the lead. So smart by Yeru not to foul there. Fisher, tough one off balance. Rebound Jackson. And a turnover. Fisher knocked it away from Routens. Second pass off the ball screen, so effective by Villanova. How about that passing on the interior as Villanova takes the lead? You know, Reynolds did a good job setting that up out there with a little fake and just a little bit of movement to get the ball going so it winds up in an open spot in that defense. Now a steal by Reynolds, two on one with Fisher. They'll play on. And a reach-in foul on Reggie Redding. A missed opportunity there for the Wildcats. Jay Wright wanted a foul. Did not get the call, but after being down early 5 to nothing, Scotty Reynolds has brought Villanova back into it with not one, but two deep threes in the early going here tonight. And early on here at Syracuse, Villanova leads by two. This game that they've been waiting for for months and months, and I'll tell you, what an interesting day in college basketball number one Kansas loses in Stillwater number two Kentucky loses in Knoxville and Notre Dame goes on the road and gets a huge win for them without Luke Herringote they beat Georgetown look at the emotion for Mike Bray and Jay that's two big wins in a week for the Irish that's huge for them and without Luke Herringote you mentioned that that's really important that's three big wins they have on the season that puts them right in bubble territory to make the tournament and with number one losing number two losing number three uh, Purdue is playing tomorrow if number four Syracuse wins tonight you never know what's going to happen but obviously we're going to see a lot of changes uh, up at the top of the national rankings when the new poll comes out on Monday this will be our first look uh, Dan at the uh, Villanova press they're going to just give a little token pressure now and maybe extend that with a little bit more emphasis as we go along and Syracuse which only goes seven deep in all likelihood, it brings in their two key bench players tonight. Scoop Jardine, number 11, and Chris Joseph, 32, with the ball. Villanova goes 11 deep, and one of those players, Isaiah Armwood, number 34, is in for the first time. And getting right in on the action as soon as he comes into the game is one of the best and most exciting bench players in the country in Chris Joseph. He probably brings more to the game off the bench than any college player in the country does, Dan. I don't think there's anybody that really is close to what he means to a team. He's a six starter on this team. And he gets to the line more than any other orange player. The key to that play, though, was giving up a middle drive. You have got to force that ball baseline because it just breaks your defense down to give that straight line drive right into the middle. Syracuse back on top after the three-point play. The big scoreboard here says, fans, this is the Loud House. Let's hear you. And they oblige willingly here in Syracuse. Again, 34,616. A new record for an on-campus college basketball game, breaking the record set four years ago in Jerry McNamara's final game in this building. That game, ironically, was also against Villanova. Route is a deep one. A little bit strong. Rebound Fisher. Fisher with a great speed, puts the brakes on. Corey Stokes in off the bench, and he misses his first look. Pena doing great work underneath. Pena had a great hesitation there. He gave a little head fake that kind of froze the Syracuse defenders on either side of him and then made a very quick move after that little fake. A nice use of the left hand as well. 
Rick Jackson, just as Jay mentioned, getting better and better offensively. Unfortunately, <laughs> didn't sell the story we were telling right there with a turnover. Fisher to the other end, and he is fouled by Jardine. Uh, Corey Stokes, unfortunately uh, for him and the Villanova program, uh, in the news for uh, the wrong reasons this week. After their last game was out at a bar with some teammates and their families, and after he left the bar about 2 in the morning, uh, was eventually cited, was not arrested, but was fined by a police officer for public urination. And uh, Jay Wright said, it's a kid who made a mistake. And we're going to deal with it internally. Stokes is normally a starter. Jay is not starting tonight, but Jay Wright swears it's because he wanted Yaru in there for more size that Stokes is still going to play a lot of minutes. And within the Villanova program, this is a small matter, not a big deal as far as they're concerned. No question. I think it is a small matter, and they're handling it exactly right in my judgment. But you're right. Yaru is starting because of offensive rebounding issues that they had against Pittsburgh, not by any small off-court indiscretion. Nature creates some difficult situations <laughs> like that. Good thing those police officers aren't at country clubs around the country. <laughs> Villanova down five to nothing early, now up 16 to 12. Dominic Cheek, another freshman, is into the game for the Wildcats. Rattles with the handoff. Johnson adjusts. Look at uh, the rebound there. Skying for it is Armwood. And then a giveaway at the other end by Reynolds. You know, just a moment ago, uh, Pena gets the ball at the top of the key, and he immediately gives it up with the guard handling the ball, going all the way to the bucket and scoring from the free throw line. What a smart move Pena uh, made there. And Jay mentioned earlier what a smart team, intelligent team Villanova is. The Final Four team a year ago. Won that incredible game over Pittsburgh. to would advance to the Final Four, lost to the national semifinals. Joseph spins, uses the left hand. And the rebound comes down to Yaru. So far, Villanova doing a nice job protecting the glass at their end. There's an example of a ball screen against a 2-3 zone. Ooh, and on the offensive glass, the freshman Dominic Cheek out of Jersey City makes a loud statement. Well, one of the problems with the zone is it can give up offensive rebounds. You don't block anybody out. Dominic Cheek out of St. Anthony's High School in Jersey. That's pretty impressive with his length and athleticism. And Villanova's opened up a six-point lead.